Every year in the United States, we see more merchandise in stores about the Day of the Dead mixed in with Halloween stuff. Is the Day of the Dead a Mexican version of Halloween? How similar or different are these two traditions? We compare and contrast Halloween with the Day of the Dead in another video in the Versus series that you can find in the Versus playlist in this Oscivision channel. This video is part of the Addendum series where we explore and expand concepts, ideas, and practically any topic that might be somewhat familiar to us, but we cannot really explain. This time, we're exploring a tradition that is becoming popular in the United States and seems to be merging with Halloween, the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead is the English translation from Spanish Dia de los Muertos, or simply Dia de Muertos. The basic idea is to remember and honor those loved ones who have passed away. The origins of this celebration are very old, and like many other old traditions, it has been influenced by different cultures throughout time. The Day of the Dead is celebrated from October 31st through November 2nd. In some places, the celebrations last a whole week. The Day of the Dead is actually on November 2nd, but the preparations and the incorporation of Christian Catholic elements begin on October 31st. That is one of the reasons why it gets mixed up with Halloween. While this holiday is celebrated in different Latin American countries, the origins of the Day of the Dead are in the pre-Columbian Mexico. Pre-Columbian means before Columbus arrived. The Aztecs were a huge empire that extended throughout what is now central Mexico since the 1300s. But their dominance extended as far as the current northwestern Mexico and Central American countries like Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, and part of Honduras, and even Nicaragua. All of these peoples had their own traditions and celebrations honoring their dead loved ones and warriors. While the Aztecs respected the religions and cultures of the many peoples they dominated, the Aztec culture was a strong influence. The Aztecs believed that the goddess of dead, Mixtecasihuatl, and her husband, Mictlantecutl, the god ruler of Mictlan, which is the underworld or dimension of the dead, kept the bones and souls of all dead people. During this period of time of the year, November 2nd, the veil between the underworld and the world of the living became very thin, and these Aztec deities allowed the souls to return to the world of the living and visit with their loved ones. In order for the souls to find their way back to the world of the living, there are several objects that the living need to gather and place on their burial places representing the four elements of the universal cosmogony, or the origin of the universe, which is shared by all ancient mystical philosophies. These are earth, water, air, and fire. As early as October 31st, many families go to the cemeteries and clean the graves of their relatives. The aroma and bright orange color of marigold flowers, or sempasuchil in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztecs, are believed to attract the souls, so the living gather many of these flowers and decorate the graveyards with them. In order to protect the essence of the souls from disintegrating during their multidimensional journey, the living place salt over a cloth or in little containers on the graves. To make the souls feel welcome, their living relatives prepare their favorite foods and beverages and they serve them for the visiting souls. They cannot eat them, but they enjoy their essence. It is the living who indulge as part of a feast that follows the ceremony. You don't want all that delicious food to go to waste. The flowers, the salt, and all the food represent Earth. Water is essential to life and a very important element in many traditions. The Aztecs believe that souls get thirsty during their journey, so they place cups and jugs with water on the graves as well. Fire is another important element as it provides light, which the souls need to find their way to the party. After the arrival of the Spanish in the early 1500s, the use of candles substituted the torches that the Aztec used to illuminate the burial sites. The air around the graves needs to be purified, so the Aztecs burned copal, which is a resin from the tree of the same name. Copal is like incense, and it is a sacred element in important ceremonies, including the visit of the souls of ancestors. The celebrations of the Day of the Dead got intensely influenced by the Spanish as the Catholic friars found ways to evangelize and convert indigenous people to Christianity. 
While the Catholic priests introduced All Saints Day and All Souls Day, which coincidentally happened on November 1st and 2nd respectively, the converted indigenous people continued celebrating the Day of the Dead at the same time, although they included Christian symbols like crosses made with marigolds and candles, and also attended Mass and prayers at church. The Catholic Church did not see the graveyard celebration positively, so they tried to forbid that practice. However, such a strong cultural tradition was impossible to stop. People began creating displays in their houses called ofrendas or offerings, with the same elements as they did in the graveyards. They included artifacts that belonged to their dead loved ones, like pieces of clothing they used to wear. Eventually, the wealthy ones included portraits also. The Catholic Church had to give concessions in order to ensure the gradual conversion of indigenous people to Christianity and allowed this practice, but they had to include the cross and images of Virgin Mary and other saints on their displays. Additionally, these ofrendas had to be made in at least three different levels using boxes, bricks, and logs of wood to represent the earth at the bottom, purgatory in the middle, and heaven on the top, where the cross and the images of Virgin Mary and other saints had to be placed. These displays, or ofrendas, then began being called altars. Some of them have up to seven levels. The Aztecs used to chisel figures in stone or wood representing different deities. They also used the bark of mulberry and fig trees to make a rough type of paper called a matl, and created cut-out designs to decorate ceremonial sites. As part of the process of evangelization, the Catholic friars substituted this practice by teaching the indigenous people to perforate tissue paper, creating cutout designs depicting Christian symbols like crosses, angels, and flowers. This is called papel picado, or pierced or pecked paper, and it was a great fit to represent the element of air that was important for the indigenous people. The skull or calavera in Spanish is also a typical element in the ofrendas and papel picado. Now you can find sugar skulls decorated with intricate colorful designs and you can get ones with your name or the name of your ancestors on the forehead. People included designs of skulls as a memento mori, which is Latin for reminder of death. Not intended to be scary, but a simple reference that one day we will transcend to another dimension. What was the underworld for the Aztecs became one of the three options offered by the Catholic friars depending on your behavior while you are alive. Inferno or hell, the purgatory, or the most desired one, heaven. There is a particular type of skulls and skeletons that have become an essential component in the modern Day of the Dead celebrations, the Catrinas. Catrina is a Spanish for elegant or sophisticated. This design was originally a political cartoon created by the Mexican illustrator and lithographer José Guadalupe Posada around 1910. The intention was to mock the snobbish attitude amongst the ruling class in Mexico at the time, who was utterly concerned to imitate the European royalty and their opulent ways to demonstrate power and influence. Posada's satire was powerful, as the pretentiousness of nothing but a skeleton wearing such an elegant hat looked as ridiculous as the wealthy Mexican society trying to come across as refined European royals, while the largest part of the population was poor and exploited in haciendas. Another famous Mexican artist, Diego Rivera, took Posada's Calavera Catrina and portrayed full-bodied versions of elegant men and women in a mural for a famous hotel in Mexico City in 1947. The influence of Halloween has permeated modern Day of the Dead celebrations as many children paint their faces like the Catrina skeletons and go from door to door asking for money or candy. It's like trick-or-treating, but without tricking. Nowadays, People of all ages dress up like Katrinas for Day of the Dead parties. Another important element for the celebration of the Day of the Dead is the Bread of the Dead or Pan de Muerto. This is another evangelization strategy by the Spanish Catholic friars who used Aztec symbology to create a delicious sweet bread specifically intended for the Day of the Dead. The bread is baked in a circular shape, meaning the circle of life. On the top, there is a small ball representing a skull from which four strips of dough, molded as bones, drop downwards, dividing the bread in quarters, symbolizing the four directions of the universe in the Aztec cosmogony. But at the same time, the design makes a cross. Originally, the bread was decorated with sugar colored with beet juice to simulate blood, which was important in Aztec rituals. 
Eventually, the sugar stopped being colored and remained white to symbolize purity. This delicious bread of the dead is made with orange oils, orange peels, and anise seed, and makes a great companion to hot cocoa, which is made with cacao, a super important ingredient that only the Aztec emperor and his shamans were allowed to have. How clever were these friars, weren't they? One more fun element of the celebrations for the Day of the Dead is writing rhyme poems or funny epitaphs mocking living politicians, celebrities, or even relatives and friends. This creative type of funny poems are like limericks, and they are called calaveras literarias, or literary skulls. They are intended to make fun of personality traits of the individuals to whom they are dedicated. In general, Mexican culture is full of bright colors, music, humor, aromas, and flavors. The Day of the Dead is one good example of all this. The basic idea is that the memory of your ancestors doesn't really die if you remember them. The Day of the Dead is a beautiful homage to their memory and their legacy that lives in you. There, we have added lots of interesting information to our understanding of the Day of the Dead. If you think this has been a good addendum to your knowledge, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Check our other playlists and let us know in the comments what else you would like to see in one of our videos. Thank you for watching.